Welcome to our latest Bible Quiz Challenge, where we explore the lives of biblical characters and uncover timeless truths from God's Word. In this edition, we delve into the intriguing theme of who said what. As we journey through the scriptures to discover the voices behind some of the most profound statements in the Bible, from courageous declarations of faith to poignant cries of despair, each question offers a glimpse into the hearts and minds of those who walked closely with God. Join us as we test your knowledge and understanding of Scripture, while also uncovering valuable lessons for our own lives. So grab your Bible, sharpen your wits, and get ready to embark on an inspiring journey of discovery with our Who Said What Bible Quiz Challenge. Don't forget to like, share, and leave your answers in the comments below, and let us know how many you got right. Let's dive in together. Question 1. Who said this? How long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. A. David. P. Solomon. C. Moses. D. Elijah. The answer is D. Elijah. Elijah's boldness in confronting the prophets of Baal teaches us the importance of standing firm for God's truth, even in the face of opposition. 1 Kings 18, verse 21 to 40. Elijah's showdown on Mount Carmel demonstrates God's power and faithfulness to those who trust in him. Who said, For if you remain silent at this time, Relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place, but you and your father's family will perish. A. Esther. P. Rufa. C. Naomi. T. Deborah. The answer is A. Esther. Esther's courage and willingness to risk her life for her people illustrate the significance of using our influence and position for God's purposes. Esther 4, verse 14. Esther's uncle Mordecai encourages her to recognize her divine calling and take action to save her people. Question 3. Who said, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him? A. Job B. Jonah C. Jeremiah D. Joshua The answer is A. Job. Job's unwavering trust in God, even amidst suffering, reminds us of the importance of maintaining faith and hope in God's goodness, regardless of our circumstances. Job 13, verse 15. Despite his trials, Job expresses his commitment to trust in God, even if he cannot understand his ways. Question 4. Who said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. A. Peter. B. John the Baptist. C. Jesus. D. Paul. The answer is C. Jesus. Jesus' declaration of being the only way to the Father emphasizes the exclusive nature of salvation through him and underscores the centrality of Christ in our faith. John 14, verse 6. Jesus declares, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Question 5. Who said, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof? But just say the word, and my servant will be healed. A. Cornelius. B. The Centurion. C. Zacchaeus. D. Nicodemus. The answer is B. The Centurion. The Centurion's faith in Jesus' authority challenges us to trust in God's power and believe that He can work miracles in our lives, even from a distance. Matthew 8, verse 8. The Centurion expresses his faith in Jesus' ability to heal his servant, saying, Lord, 
I do not deserve to have you come under my roof, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. Question 6. Who said, Here I am. Send me. A. Isaiah. P. Ezekiel. C. Amos. D. Micah. The answer is A. Isaiah. Isaiah's response to God's call demonstrates the importance of readiness and willingness to serve God, even when the task may seem daunting. Isaiah 6, verse 8, question 7, who said, I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. A. Timothy P. Titus C. Paul T. Barnabas The answer is C. Paul. Paul's testimony of finishing the race and keeping the faith encourages us to persevere in our own spiritual journey, trusting in God's strength and grace to sustain us. 2 Timothy 4 verse 7 Question 8 Who said the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away? Blessed be the name of the Lord. A. Abraham B. Jacob C. Job. D. Isaac. The answer is C. Job. Job's response to loss teaches us the importance of maintaining faith and trust in God's sovereignty, even in the midst of suffering and hardship. Job acknowledges God's authority over his life. Job 1. Verse 21. Question 9. Who said, I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle? A. Peter. P. James. C. John. T. Paul. The answer is D. Paul. Paul's humility in acknowledging his unworthiness highlights the importance of recognizing our need for God's grace and the transformative power of His forgiveness. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 9, question 10. Who said, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord? A. Joshua B. Caleb C. Moses D. Gideon The answer is A. Joshua. Joshua's declaration of commitment to serving the Lord with his household challenges us to prioritize our allegiance to God above all else and lead our families in faith. Joshua 24 verse 15. Joshua calls Israel to choose whom they will serve, declaring, But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Question 11. Who said, Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. A. Moses B. David C. Joshua D. Solomon The answer is C. Joshua. Joshua reassures the Israelites of God's constant presence and encouragement as they face the challenges ahead. This teaches us the importance of trusting in God's faithfulness and promises, even in times of uncertainty. Joshua 1 verse 9, question 12, who said, Surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A. Daniel B. Jonah C. David D. Samuel The answer is C. David. David expresses his confidence in God's enduring love and provision, reminding us of the security and peace found in trusting in God's care throughout our lives. Psalm 23 verse 6. Question 13. Who said, How can I go up and give birth to a child when I myself am barren? A. Sarah B. Hannah C. Rachel D. Elizabeth
The answer is C. Rachel. Rachel's struggle with infertility heads close to home for many, reminding us of life's unpredictability. Yet, her story is a beacon of hope, showcasing God's unwavering faithfulness. Despite the obstacles, Rachel's eventual blessing with a child serves as a powerful testament to God's perfect timing. It's a reminder to hold on to hope and trust that even in our darkest moments, God is working behind the scenes, weaving together something beautiful. Genesis 30 verse 22. Then God remembered Rachel. He listened to her and enabled her to conceive. Question 14. Who said, Go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A. Peter. P. Paul. C. John. D. Jesus. The answer is D. Jesus. Jesus commissions his disciples to spread the gospel and make disciples of all nations, highlighting the universal scope of God's redemptive plan and the responsibility of believers to share the good news with others. Matthew 28 verse 19 to 20. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Question 15. Who said, Speak, for your servant is listening? A. Samuel. B. Nathan. C. Elijah. D. Elisha. The answer is A. Samuel. Samuel's response to God's call demonstrates the posture of humility and readiness to listen that is essential for effective communication with God. It teaches us the importance of being attentive and obedient to God's voice. 1 Samuel 3 verse 10 The Lord came and stood there, calling as at the other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Question 16 Who said, But as for me, I watch in hope for the Lord. I wait for God my Savior. My God will hear me. A. Jeremiah. P. Habakkuk. C. Zechariah. D. Malachi. The answer is B. Habakkuk. Habakkuk's declaration reflects a deep trust in God's faithfulness and sovereignty even in the midst of challenging circumstances. It teaches us the importance of maintaining hope and confidence in God's promises, knowing that He hears and answers our prayers. Habakkuk 3 verse 18 to 19. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to tread on the heights. Question 17. Who said, even though you intended to harm me, God intended it for good? A. Joseph. B. Moses. C. Daniel. D. Nehemiah. The answer is A. Joseph. From being sold into slavery by his own brothers, to enduring false accusations and imprisonment. Joseph's journey was fraught with hardship. Yet, through it all, Joseph never lost faith in God's plan for his life. His unwavering trust ultimately led to his elevation to a position of power and influence, where he was able to save countless lives during a time of famine. Joseph's story teaches us that even in our darkest moments, God is at work, turning our trials into triumphs and leading us toward a brighter future. Genesis 50 verse 20. Question 18. Who said, How long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen? A. Job. B. Elijah. C. Jonah. 
D. Micah The answer is C. Jonah. Jonah's cry of despair highlights the reality of human struggles and doubts, even among God's chosen servants. It reminds us of the importance of honest communication with God and the need for perseverance in prayer. Jonah 1, question 19, who said, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. A. Hamas, B. Elijah, C. Joel, D. Obadiah. The answer is B. Elijah. Elijah's plea to God reflects the reality of spiritual warfare and the challenges faced by those who stand for righteousness. Yet, it also demonstrates the power of earnest prayer and the faithfulness of God to his faithful servants. 1 Kings 19 verse 14 questioned Wendy, who said, I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. A. Moses B. Joshua C. Jacob D. Gideon The answer is D. Gideon. Gideon's acknowledgement of his own unworthiness and reliance on God's provision serves as a powerful reminder of God's ability to transform the weak into instruments of his strength and purpose. Judges 6 verse 15 to 16 As we come to the end of our Who Said This? Bible Quiz Journey, we're reminded of the rich tapestry of characters and teachings found within Scripture. Each question has not only challenged our knowledge, but also deepened our understanding of God's Word and its relevance to our lives today. Remember, the Bible is more than just a collection of stories. It's a living testament to God's faithfulness, His love, and His unchanging truth. So, as you reflect on the answers and lessons learned today, may you be inspired to dive even deeper into the scriptures, allowing God's word to shape and guide your life. Thank you for joining us on this enlightening quiz adventure. Don't forget to share your thoughts and insights in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to our channel for more enriching content and future quiz challenges. Until next time, may the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. God bless.